We left five locks around 11.30 and Yvonne took us back through Cumbran Tunnel. I'm guessing that the holes in the side of the tunnel have uh, put in the poles in to push your way through. Or maybe they're holes for the scaffolding when they built the bridge. Coming up to a very low bridge, and it really is low. This is Bridge 49. You can see. See this obstruction here. The ducks are still leading the way through the duckweed. Autumn is definitely here. We moored up around 2.30 just after Bridge 56 for a lunchtime pint. We had no problem finding the style and path that led to the pub. It was a little muddy crossing the fields and the nearby Thai Poeth farm was having new pick em pumpkin days. And this is a map showing the path we took. We ended up walking through the graveyard of St Michael's before we finally reached our destination, the Horse and Jockey. The pub has an interesting history. It was built in the late 1600s, possibly as the Vicarage. It was remodelled in the 1840s and became a coaching inn. The drip moulds over the windows are from that time period. In the late 1900s, the stables, or possibly brew house, on the right of the building was converted and added to the pub. It's worth mentioning the thatch roof. It's not common in this part of Wales. Unfortunately, the interior of the building was remodelled and is now an open bar area. It's lost a lot of its character. The Horse and Jockey has more of an emphasis on wines as opposed to beers, so it was not one of our favourites. However, I did like this sign. We cruised for about an hour or so and moored up just beyond Bridge 62, that's High Bridge in Mim Hillard. There are good moorings here with rings and it's just a short walk down the road to the Star Inn. This is Mandy talking to Sam, one of the locals. And Mandy gave the landlady her new title, Pubstress, and she liked that. Yvonne and I talked with a couple that were hiring for the first time and they were finding the shallow canal a bit of a problem. A very friendly pub serving good food and good beer, Abbott Cask Ale. This one is very high on our recommendation list. Oh, by the way, one of the locals told us that Tom Jones lives in the village and often pops in. Another enjoyable day cruising and visiting pubs. Tuesday the 19th and here's Mandy doing one of our daily pre-cruise routines going down the weed hatch and making sure the prop's clear. A bit of a grey morning as we cruise back past the shallow moorings at Bridge 69. The leaves on the trees are starting to turn. Since we started our cruise last Saturday we've only run into a handful of moving boats. 
However, we did run into some congestion at Goitry Wharf, uh, mainly canoes and moored boats. Red Line narrowboats, part of the ABC group, have a marina here and they add to the congestion. The wharf is worth a visit, but I had to go up to Bridge 75 to find a moor in and had to put pins in and use the plank. The main attraction there are the lime kilns. We spent about 15 minutes walking around taking a couple of photographs. We left the wharf around 1.30 and had lunch on board as we navigated the bends around Mill Turn. After lunch I relaxed on the foredeck and had a wee droppy of scotch. Many parts of the Mom and Brat cut into the hillside to maintain a constant elevation level, thereby reducing the need for locks and tunnels. Here you see the wooded hillside coming down to the canal on the left and the steep drop off to the valley and villages on the right. It was a grey afternoon but no rain. Around 5 o'clock we moored up for the day just before Todd's Bridge. Again that's 95A. The reason we've moored here is because Yvonne was thinking about walking from the boat down to Abergavenny to catch her train tomorrow morning. Now, it was about a 45 minute walk down a steep hill and she had some luggage. We were about a mile and a half from the village of Goffalon and decided to return to the Tafani Bont for dinner. Unfortunately, I'd forgotten they'd begun their remodeling project and were no longer serving food. However, we did stay, had a couple of pints and enjoyed chatting with the locals. We were mentioning Yvonne's plan to catch her train tomorrow and one of them, Ken, very kindly offered to drive Yvonne there in the morning. After walking back to the boat in the dark, we cooked Cornish pasties for our dinner. It's Thursday, October the 20th, and it's my 87th birthday. I was treated to a cuppa in bed, and Yvonne is showing me the present awaiting me in Reno. A shovel and garden clippers. And another surprise for my birthday was the heater wasn't working on the boat. We called the boatyard to let them know. Ah, Yvonne's leaving us today. Bye. Did you, did you have a nice trip? I had a wonderful trip. Good. On my way back to Dublin. It's about 10.30 and I'm getting us underway with a warm cup of coffee with some Baileys in it. Mandy had been on a search for a mom and break bridge plaque and finally found one at Roadhouse Narrowboats. It was the last one in the shop. I also bought a horse brass and that was also the last one in the shop. Roadhouse Narrowboats is also a small family run business and the oldest hire boat company on the canal. They have five narrowboats. We spent an interesting 15 minutes talking with Sally. She and her husband Nigel are the owners. Just past Bridge 104 there are three line cones that are part of Lathnelli Wharf. They're somewhat hidden so it's easy to cruise by them without noticing them. A short distance beyond the kilns and in the middle of nowhere the engine light came on and started beeping. There was another call to the boatyard. The mechanic, Ollie, his Owen son, found us okay. Apparently the ordinator had loosened and the belts were not tight. Unfortunately the bolt holding the ordinator to the engine had stripped 
So we limped just past 109 to Heron's Breast Marina. His car was parked here. When we were mooring up in the marina, Mandy went to get off the stern, grabbed a seating plank, which was not fixed, and started to fall between the rear of the boat and the dock, and the engine was also running. Ollie's quick reflexes grabbed her arm and stopped her fall. This could have been a very serious accident. After that little incident, Ollie went to the Heron Rest Marina, got a new bolt, fixed the old nader, and we were on our way. Happy birthday, Dad! This interesting contraption cuts and trims the vegetation alongside the canal banks. Today's weather was more like April with intermittent showers. We had lots of opportunities to take shots of the rainbow. With the engine seeming to be okay, we decided to have a long afternoon cruise to Bridge 129. That's about five and a half miles. I know it's a no-no, but with the headlight on and Mandy in the bow of the boat with a flashlight, we managed to get to Bridge 129 around a quarter to seven. It was a little dark and there was no moon tonight. The reason that we wanted to get to Bridge 129 is because we wanted to have my birthday dinner in the Red Lion pub in the village of Langidina. I wish I could pronounce that correctly. The pub was a half mile walk down a dark narrow hedge lane and it was well worth the effort to get there. We had a nice dinner and chatted with some other narrow boaters who were there. I had a very nice 87th birthday. Friday the 21st. Yeah, it was heavy rain during the night, but by the time we got underway around 8.30, it had stopped raining. We'd only gone about a hundred yards, and then guess what? The engine light came on. One more call to the boatyard. This is Ollie, and to his credit, I've got to say that he was very responsive to our call outs. Right away, he realized there was no water in the radiator. Then, after looking around, he came to the conclusion that there might be a crack in it or even in the engine block. Things did not look good. If we wanted to continue with our cruise, our only option was to transfer to the shorter 45 foot country girl. And that's what we decided to do, so we started packing up all our belongings. We started back to the boatyard with Ollie steering and Mandy running backwards and forwards with jugs of water. On the way, Ollie noticed something and he pulled over to check it out. It was not a fractured radiator or engine block that was causing the leakage. It was one of the water hoses had been damaged when the alternator was rattling around. He was able to shorten the hose and cut out the damaged part. And then we were left with the decision. Did we want to trust country made? or should we transfer to Country Girl? We decided on the former and started unpacking. Everything seemed to be okay and by 10.30 we had reached the lower lock. So in reality we'd only lost about two hours of cruising so it wasn't disastrous.
Well, at 11 o'clock we were back to Country Craft Boat Yard where we started our cruise six days ago. We had a pump out and then we were ready to cruise the northern section of the Mom and Brett to Brecon. Leaving the boat yard, there are three locks. Golaukoid, Little and Top. After the locks is pleasant rolling pasture land. By 1.15 we reached the 375 yard long Ashford Tunnel. It's more of a culvert than a tunnel. About a third of the way through there's a bend and the ceiling comes down to within a few inches of our roof. You have to know when to duck. We are now approaching the village of Talibont and Usk. Just beyond this building and just before Bridge 142 is the Traveller's Rest. However, we didn't stop here and we decided to push on for about half a mile to the very good moorings that overlook the village. It was around 2.30 when we moored up and we decided to walk over to the White Hart Inn and have a lunchtime pint. It had a nice fire going and we chatted with some cyclists and one of them lived on a narrowboat on the North Oxford Canal. The boat's name is Wally One. They weren't serving food until five o'clock, so we decided to walk over and try the star. They didn't have a fire going there and it wasn't very cosy, so we decided to return to the White Hart Inn. As you can see, we had a little liquid sunshine. We had a nice dinner there and the waitress that was serving us was friendly. However, I've got to say that the lady who was running the place was not the friendliest of individuals. We'd walked out without paying for our beer on the first visit, and I think the waitress was a little surprised at our honesty when Mandy told them about it. We walked back to the boat in pouring rain and had an early night. Saturday the 22nd. Rain throughout the night, and Mandy cooked a nice fry up breakfast. By 9 o'clock, we were underway under a bright sunny sky. In December 1994, there was a major breach in this embankment, and it caused serious flooding to the village. At the end of the embankment, there's a display that commemorates the 17th poet and doctor, Henry Vaughan. I think we should have spent more time in Taliban and gone on the Henry Vaughan Walk. Sounds very interesting and covers some of the old railroad tracks. A few yards beyond the sign is the electronically operated Taliban Drawbridge, number 144. It's about seven miles from Taliban to Brecon and I'm going to cover this part of our cruise with a series of photos and videos along with a few captions. I'll mute the engine noise and keep quiet so you can enjoy the scenery.
If we cruise the seven miles and one lock from Talabont to Brecon in four and a half hours. A nice leisurely cruise through very pleasant countryside. We walked around Brecon in the afternoon and Mandy visited a few charity shops. We only took a couple of photos. This is St. Mary's Church. This is Brecon's 11th century Norman castle. It fell into ruins and was renovated in the early 19th century and converted into a hotel. And that's what it remains today. I can't remember what building this was. We stopped for a pint of Wye Valley Bitter at the Clarence and chatted with the owner and another fella for a while. We then decided to return to the boat and have Tim Pies for supper. I had my favourite, steak and kidney. <laughs>